Again, we will start with topical questions. I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, could I ask the Minister, um, would she agree with me that last Friday's Northern Ireland Investment Conference was the best showcase event and was superbly organised by Invest Northern Ireland? This could be a very short uh, answer, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, this is a pretty tough question, uh, and uh, I'm sure that it will be followed up by an equally tough question from Mr. Alistair later on. Um, but can I say that I was extremely proud of the way in which the investment conference was planned, uh, executed, and uh, I was very proud of the fact that we had 121 uh, international companies uh, at the investment conference with 55 potential uh, new investors. And instead of the selling being carried out by ministers and by Invest Northern Ireland, but of course we were doing that uh, in any event, the, the main uh, piece of the conference was really hearing from the investors who are already in Northern Ireland and who felt so strongly about their investment and about the experience they've had here in Northern Ireland that they wanted to advocate on behalf of Northern Ireland as a place to do business. So I think it was a tremendous success. We look forward to the tangible benefits of the investment conference rolling out over the next six to 18 months. Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Minister, for that uh, very responsive answer. Um, could I ask the Minister, um, you mentioned about six to nine months, would you have any idea um, what sort of investment will com come back at this stage? Are there any indications that people are genuinely interested in investing in Northern Ireland? Well, yes, I believe that the investment conference was a great catalyst for uh, moving potential investors uh, along that decision making route. Um, there were some people at the conference uh, who were visiting Northern Ireland for the very first time. Uh, there were some people who had already made visits here and were actually close to making uh, a decision. Uh, and because of that, uh, there will be, uh, I think, investment decisions made very soon in relation to Northern Ireland as a place to do business. There will be others who will follow through maybe at a later stage. But I would think within the next six months we will see uh, a tangible benefit. And that is a change, if I may say so, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, from the last investment conference which I attended uh, then as the Environment Minister back in May of 2008, he held here in Northern Ireland. And at that stage we were saying that to look forward we would uh, need to assess what was happening in 18 months' time. But I think the fact that we had potential investors, some of them further along the road than others there, I think we will see tangible benefits in the next six months. Mr. Jonathan Craig. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker, and I'll be very careful not to uh, go into the area of, of the oral questions. Minister, rural broadband and the issues of the last sort of 10 per cent in Northern Ireland that has not yet been covered by broadband. Can the Minister give the House an update on where the Department stands with the BDUK rollout and for the uninitiated that is broadband development uh, fund that the Government announced in September of last year? And uh, can I say to the member, he uh, probably could get a more detailed answer to this because uh, question number four, which I think he's probably referring to, Mr. Principal <laughs> Deputy Speaker, has been withdrawn uh, by Mr. McRae, and therefore I can go into some more detail uh, for uh, the member. Um, we are uh, moving ahead with the BDUK money. Uh, we have been carrying out consultations in relation to what we need to do in Northern Ireland. That has been somewhat held back uh, by the European Union in relation to state aid rules. Uh, and because of that, we had to carry out a, a further consultation. Uh, we have received responses to that further consultation. Some 156 uh, individuals and 13 organisations highlighting uh, nearly 700 postcodes uh, where it was felt broadband was not available. So we're taking all those into uh, consideration and we hope to move forward on this matter very soon. Craig for his supplementary. Thank you, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker. Um, with regard to the rollout, um, it will not really matter who wins the project in my mind as long as they actually deliver, as I will admit to being one of these people without broadband. Well, areas where there is a large concentration of housing, such as my own, where there's over 150 houses affected by this, be given prioritisation under whoever wins the scheme? And will the Minister also 
give a commitment that it will not undermine any of the previous schemes that uh, her department has ruled out in rural areas? Well, as a member will know, uh, what we very much want to avoid doing is to have any duplication at all. So to his latter question, uh, this is very much to add value to uh, what is already in place and uh, to, to reach those harder areas um, to get to, particularly in rural areas, although I do take his point that there are some areas which he may not consider rural in the Northern Ireland sense, uh, which are still suffering um, from not having access to broadband. He will be pleased to know that the uh, Anna Hilt postcodes, uh, which I know he has been raising with me uh, on a number of occasions, as indeed of his colleagues uh, will be included in the intervention area and uh, we will move forward and uh, as he says he doesn't mind who gets the uh, procurement or who wins the tender uh, as long as it's delivered and that's certainly the position of the department as well. And I call Ms Lawrence Kelly. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, be aware of uh, the work, uh, uh, I think fairly piece, uh, substantial work going on by Invest NI in relation to how they can set more challenging targets, moving from jobs promoted to jobs created. I wonder, c- could you uh, give us any further information in relation to that work and when it might be completed? Well, indeed, and this has been uh, an issue that has come before this House on many occasions, so much so that when uh, we launched the Jobs Fund, which is the fund that was set up to try and bring about jobs quickly with some of our more indigenous firms, that it uh, immediately had that jobs created, um, if you like, target there. Uh, it has been a transition a piece in, in respect of uh, other selected financial assistance and as I said previously I hope that those will come forward in the very near future. In relation to the targets that have been set for Invest Northern Ireland, um, in terms of the job funds uh, the target is to create, to actually create 4,000 jobs through the jobs fund um, and that's on the 2011-15 to 15 target and we're already at 3,306 in terms of the jobs there, fund. There. So I think we will see uh, the jobs fund going way beyond its target. I have certainly said to the Chief Executive and to Invest Northern Ireland that I expect them to go way beyond their target uh, because I really do believe that the jobs fund, in very small ways sometimes, is making an absolutely fundamental difference to the uh, jobs available right across Northern Ireland. Mrs Dolores Kelly for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, Minister, will those definitions then have a read across in particular to EU funding and, and indeed be adopted uh, by DARD in terms of their assessment of projects for uh, rural development funding? I can't speak for the Agriculture Minister and I know there's a consultation uh, going on in, at the moment in respect of the Rural Development Programme. Uh, I very much hope that job creation will be one of the elements that she will look at in her Rural Development uh, Programme because I think it would really add value to the rural uh, setting in Northern Ireland if we could look at jobs created as well. Uh, I have asked, for example, Intertrade Ireland um, uh, on a north-south basis to look at jobs created when they are, are looking at what they're doing in their programmes. And of course, Intertrade Ireland is not a job creation agency, it's a trade agency, but yet I have asked them to look at how many jobs they're creating when they intervene as well. So I think it's a very good mechanism to have there. Sometimes it's not the primary uh, reason where we intervene, but I think it's good to know the number of jobs that have been created. Well, Ms. Katrina Ruyang. Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. And I'd just like to ask the Minister, given that in her recent correspondence to my colleague Chris Hazard, um, she acknowledged that the Tourist Board recognised Explorers Aquarium um, as a major, major tourist attraction. And I wonder um, what, and also given that the Minister spoke about the need to, for Ards Borough Council to uh, continue to support this project or to find a sustainable solution. I wonder, could the Minister outline what engagements she's had with the Minister for Environment or indeed Ards Council d- personal involvement herself uh, to lend their department's assistance to ensure this project continues? Thank the member for her question, and indeed I did say that uh, in my answer to her colleague uh, in relation to Explorers, and uh, therefore I, I'm sure she'll be a little surprised to know that I haven't had any correspondence from Ard's uh, Council in relation to this issue. Uh, I do believe, uh, I, I mightn't have said major, major, uh, but I do believe that uh, Explorers does provide a tourism offering 
particularly in Port of Ferry because Port of Ferry uh, is quite remote. It's not a, as easy to access perhaps as some other areas and it will have a huge impact on it. But I think the solution uh, in relation to this is to look uh, to all sources of funding, uh, whether that's public funding or private funding, and uh, I understand uh, my ministerial colleague, the Minister of Environment, is bringing uh, an executive paper, uh, which unfortunately I haven't had sight of as yet, but we wait to see the content of his executive paper. I want to thank the Minister for that answer. I am a bit surprised that there weren't more meetings, but anyway, there's still time for that to happen. Um, but I suppose the question I have is, what, does the Minister believe that if this project is such an important project, and I believe it is, that over the last 26 years, uh, 1.8 million of support was only provided by uh, NITB? Now, that seems a very, very small amount of money over a period of 26 years, and I would ask the Minister if she will redouble her efforts to continue to find a solution that is, her department is part of. I am, of course, happy to work with other executive colleagues to be a part of the solution. I don't accept uh, what she says in relation to the £1.8 million. I think there are a lot of facilities right across Northern Ireland who would be very content to have £1.8 million of Northern Ireland Tourist Board funding. Uh, in fact, I can think of a few off the top of my head uh, in my own constituency who would be quite happy to have that sort of funding. But I will work with uh, uh, ministerial colleagues. I look forward to receipt of the executive paper. Uh, um, but I do make the point to the member that I think it's about looking at a holistic uh, answer to this problem. It is a problem. We have to look everywhere to find solutions and it's not just a question, and I'm sure she's not suggesting this, it's not just a question of coming to central government with the handout. I don't think that's what they're doing in Explorers. I've had some very interesting conversations about alternative answers to what's happening in Explorers and I look forward to continuing those discussions. Mr. Sean Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and thanks to the Minister for her answers thus far. Could I ask the Minister what she's doing to further promote St. Patrick's Centre and the St. Patrick's Trail? I thank the Member uh, for that question, and I know the Member and indeed the Member of Parliament for the area raises this question with me quite frequently. We have uh, a designated officer in the Tourist Board to work with uh, the St. Patrick's Trail and promote it. I happen to think that we could do more to promote St. Patrick's Trail because I think it's a tremendous asset that we have. Yeah. It's one of those assets that uh, I don't believe people are aware of and that, I have to say, comes back to the Northern Ireland Tours Board and Tourism Ireland to promote uh, the St. Patrick's uh, for example, if you have people coming across in their own cars, uh, I think that there's a great opportunity for people to travel from Armagh right the way around to Downpatrick uh, and indeed further uh, to see the birthplace and to really celebrate uh, the Christian heritage that we have here in Northern Ireland. So I'm very content to say to the member that we will work with him and indeed his other colleagues uh, in the two constituencies, at least, I say at least, uh, concerned because I know that North Down uh, as well have a very keen interest in St. Patrick as well. Didn't forget you, Gordon. <laughs> I call Mr. Sean Rogers for supplementary. Thanks, Minister, for your response. And, and I suppose just following on from that, um, will there be more funds available, particularly for the marketing of the product? Of course, we will um, continue to work with the St. Patrick's Trail. Um, I always, when I look at marketing, um, uh, right across Northern Ireland and where we're using it uh, internationally, look to see that it has a geographical spread. And I think that's important because uh, tourism is a product that goes right across Northern Ireland and therefore that should be reflected in all of our marketing produce. I'm content that that is the case, but as I said, we're happy to work with colleagues uh, in all of the constituencies concerned to make sure that that is the case going forward. Mr Sidney Anderson. For Thank you, Principal Minister. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for her views on the possible investment impact of Council, uh, Chancellor George Osborne's announcement uh, that visa applications for Chinese visitors to the United Kingdom are to be relaxed? Well, we very much welcome uh, this announcement in Northern Ireland, um, particularly from a tourism standpoint. 
Uh, we believe that this will increase the number of tourists that will come uh, to the wider UK but also to Northern Ireland and we are building up a very firm relationship with our colleagues in China and uh, the, uh, this arrangement which the Chancellor announced yesterday I think is going to be a very positive one for Northern Ireland and we'll certainly be using it to our advantage from a tourism perspective but also from a business perspective. It's the time up for topical questions. I'm sorry we haven't a chance for the supplementary and we'll